Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to today's SolidWorks Sheet Metal Quick Tip on how to go from a rectangular shape up to a circular shape in sheet metal. Now here you can see the website alibaba.com and you can see that we've got this round to rectangular duct reducer slash transition of air ventilation parts. And so this is kind of the part that we're trying to emulate in today's example. This section up top here is actually a different body. This is a multi-body example. And we created that section by doing a swept sheet metal. So if you're interested in learning about that, let me know down in the comments. And also this lower section was really tricky. It was surprisingly difficult to construct this set of flanges in SolidWorks and get the flanges to actually run horizontal instead of kicking off at a 90 degree angle. So if you're interested in how I did that, let me know that down in the comments as well. I am happy to make another video about this topic. I love sheet metal. I love teaching sheet metal. In fact, we actually have a sheet metal training class coming up a little later this month. So if you find yourself in a position where you're ready to learn more about sheet metal and you want to learn from me, a certified instructor, it's a three day class. It's a web meeting. It's a, each day is a half day. So you don't have to leave your desk. You get to continue to stay caught up on all your work, but at the same time, you get to learn a lot of really good stuff about the world of SolidWorks sheet metal. So if you're interested in taking that training class, take a look down below in the description. We've got all the information about that class. All right, so let's hide this upper body that we created and let's get into it and talk about how to create this transition from this lower rectangle to this upper circle. Now, the truth is we don't actually create a lower rectangle. What we do is we create a series of line arc line arc line arc line arc and then a little break here and we do the same thing up top a little tiny line a great big arc 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 and then we use the command sheet metal lofted bends to loft those two together and there's some options you can use to control how many bends you actually end up with here in the corner but ultimately what you end up with is a shape that can be flattened and as we talked about in an earlier video we could then right mouse button on that flat pattern and choose export to dxf dwg and this lets you take that geometry and export it to a one-to-one -one dxf so that you can send this off to your water jet or your plasma cutter, laser cutter, you know, whatever the next step is in the manufacturing process. So let's talk about how we can get to this flattened shape by beginning a new part. I'm gonna choose new here. Let me bring up my keyboard cam so you can see what keystrokes I'm using. And we're gonna make this part out of MMGS, out of millimeters. And we're gonna start out here on the top plane, begin a sketch, S key. I'm gonna choose to create a rectangle create a rectangle like so. I'm gonna to choose to create a fillet, so S key fillet. Let's keep this fillet pretty tight here. We'll make this four millimeters, and then I'm just gonna put a window around that entire rectangle. Kind of cool, right? If you ever need to fill it off all the corners on a rectangle, you can just window it. Hit the like button if you like that quick tip. And so we're gonna hit the green check mark here, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a couple of lines here that come down from the origin. So a line down here like so, and back. I did that with three lines, and then I'm gonna use the trim command. So S key power trim and I'm going to trim through these and I'm going to trim through this and boom there we go hit escape let's take these two lines and make them for construction and then let's start adding some dimensions into this thing so we'll say that the uh, distance from this line to this point is going to be one millimeter that's going to be our seam we'll say that the distance from this line to this line is going to be 120 millimeters we'll say the distance from this line to this line is going to be 180 millimeters we'll say the distance from the origin to this line is going to be uh, let's make that 75 millimeters and the distance from the origin to this line here is going to be 70 millimeters so obviously this rectangle is not centered on the origin and when we go to create our loft we're going to loft it to our circular profile which is going to be centered on the origin and that's just to kind of illustrate that it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetric it can be but it could also be something that's offset or that upper profile could even be at an angle that's a really common thing that you see with air ducting where that upper profile is on a 30 or 45 degree angle and that'll totally Totally work too you just follow these same steps so if you're following along with as a tutorial that's what you want your first sketch to look like on the top plane now the last thing you're gonna do before you exit this sketch is you're gonna hit escape put a window around everything and press Control C for copy and then we can exit this sketch 
and then we are going to press control one which is a front view control one and then we're going to single click on the top plane and then hold control and drag the top plane up and i'll include a link to a video on this topic but this is a real common shortcut we use to quickly create a copy of our planes at an offset distance and let's make that distance 135 enter and enter and so now on this sketch plane, we're gonna create the same geometry as on this sketch plane, but instead of the lines being long and the uh, corners being small, we're gonna make the lines very short and we're gonna make the corners very large. So we click on this top, this upper plane that we just created, we choose to begin a new sketch, and then you can click in the background of that sketch and press Control V for paste. And there you go, you were able to paste that sketch down in place. So I'm gonna press Control-8 to get normal two. I'm gonna take this center point of our sketch and just drag it right here. If it doesn't all move together, or if you, if you lost some of those relationships or whatever, that's okay. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this sketch up top here to look a little something like this. Instead of this being 75, we'll make it 25. Instead of this being 75, we'll make this 25. Instead of this being 120, we'll make it 50. And instead of this being 180, we'll make it 50. So that's basically what you want to get to for that upper profile. You want it to be 50 by 50 and you want it to be offset from the origin by 25 and 25. And once you have that, the final thing you're going to do is you're going to input your radius value here. The thing is, we can't make this radius value exactly 25 because if we do, we're going to lose this line here. And we also have to account for this little seam that we have here. So instead, let's make this something like 23. So it's almost a circle, but really what it is is it's a line and then an arc and then a line and then an arc and then a line and then an arc. And so now what we can do is we can exit this sketch and now we're gonna loft those two profiles together. But instead of going into features and doing this as a solid loft, we're gonna go into sheet metal and we're gonna do this using the lofted bends command. Now, when you go into the lofted bend command in sheet metal, and by the way, if you don't have sheet metal up here, you can right mouse button, go to tabs, and then go to sheet metal. So if you're, if you're still new to sheet metal, this is kind of how you would do it. Right mouse button, go to tabs and then go to sheet metal. And so we're gonna choose lofted bends here. And when we go to make this loft, what we're gonna take note of is that we've got a certain number of sketch entities in each profile. For example, on the bottom here, we've got this line, so that's one. We've got this radius in the corner, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine entities total in that sketch. And this sketch here also has nine entities total. Well, because both of our sketches have the same number of entities, we can perform a lofted bend. So we're going to loft from, from right here, pick right here, right next to where you did that break on the linear entity, and then pick up here, same spot. So remember, whenever you're doing a loft, you want to always pick in the same location on each profile. So we're going to pick up here on this linear entity right next to where we made the break. Well, because each profile that you're lofting between has the same number of entities you can either choose the manufacturing method bent or formed you can do either however if you had a different number of profiles in the lower profile or a different number of entities in the lower profile like let's say down here there were six entities and then up here let's say there was 12 entities if you had a different number of entities in each sketch profile then you can only use the formed option the formed option now what the formed option does is it it blends those sketches and then it allows you to show bend lines in the flat pattern but it doesn't actually break up these faces. So that's the formed version. The formed version doesn't actually break up those faces. What the bent option does is it does actually break up these faces. So what we end up with here is we end up with a flat face and then a bend and then a flat face and then a bend and so on and so on. And that's the difference between the formed option and the bent option. The formed option you know, you, you have to use the formed option if you have a mismatch in the number of entities, but you can still loft, you can still do a sheet metal loft even if the number of entities doesn't match. But if you, if you do have the number, same number of entities or if you can, you know, try to have the same number of entities, then you get some additional advanced, kind of advanced options from that bent option. So for example, we can control how many bends are taking place in that faceted region. And there's some other options here too, but I like to use this option here, number of bends. So how many bends are there? So you see if we reduce this down to like three, 
that it's going to look very, very jaggedy here in the corners. Only two flat faces and, and a total of three bends. One, two, three in each corner. But if we set that up to like nine or ten bends in the corner, then it's going to look much smoother as we perform that loft. And then finally, as we get down to the bottom of the property manager here, we can specify what we want the material thickness to be. I'm going to set mine to 0 0.5 millimeters and what we want the bend radius to be. So remember, what we're doing here is we're creating a bend, bend, and then a flat spot, and then a bend, and then a flat spot. So that bend in between each of those flat spots is going to have a radius. What's that radius going to be? It's going to be one millimeter one millimeter for that one. And so once we get all those settings looking pretty good, pretty much matching what we've got here, we're using the option for bent, we're using the option for number of bends, we're setting that to 10, we hit the green check mark, and oh yeah, look at that, that looks beautiful. And so there is your loft going from a rectangle up to a circle, and of course this can be flattened and there we see what that flat pattern looks like. And then we could do a right mouse button and choose export to DXF DWG. And so I hope that answers the question of how to go from a rectangle to a circle when you're working in sheet metal and you're doing uh, lofted type bends in sheet metal. Of course, if you're interested in any of the other topics that we talked about at the intro, like how to do this swept surface or how to create these flanges, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to make another video about these topics. And of course, if you're ready to take your sheet metal experience to the next level, and you're ready to learn some SOLIDWORKS sheet metal fundamentals from a SOLIDWORKS expert, be sure to take a look at that, that link down in the description below and sign up for that upcoming training class where you can learn everything you need to know to construct sheet metal parts, to make one-to-one -one DXF exports, and to make sheet metal drawings, and a lot more about the wonderful world of sheet metal. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next Too Tall Toby SOLIDWORKS sheet metal quick tip. See you, everybody.